Hello, good afternoon, welcome, happy Thursday. Thanks so much for joining us uh, here at this interactive live stream event with Honda and Bennett Spike Social. My name is Michael Mann and I am a motorcycle journalist with, with Bennett's working on the Bike Social website. Uh, alongside me, Alan Scott. Alan, afternoon. how are you doing? Very good, Michael, very good, thank good you. Stuff. Do you want to introduce yourself? Certainly, my name is Alan Scott. I'm a professional trainer. Uh, I specialize in the automotive industry and I've worked with Honda motorcycles for about 18 years. Um, but also I'm a motorcyclist and I average, apart from this year obviously, yeah. around about 30,000 miles a year. So hopefully we'll bring some of that product insight and real world rider insight as well to our discussions. 30,000 miles? 30,000 miles. That's quite a commitment. Love it. I can't, <laughs> run, I can't match that. What I can do is I can tell you that in my role I get to ride a lot of bikes, probably around 30 or so per year. And therefore, I've got to be familiar with all sorts of different types of machinery, from scooters to sports bikes to adventure bikes, naked, all, the, all of them in between as well. And that's part of the reason why we're here today. We're going to try and uh, make you familiar with uh, two of motorcycling's greatest icons. Uh, certainly, the, the, the names of these two bike ranges, uh, Africa Twin and Goldwing, are fairly synonymous with comfort, luxury, touring, uh, adventure probably. Um, so whether you're going to the shops to get some milk or whether you're going to do a lap of Europe, uh, I think either of these two ranges are equally as adept at doing that. Um, and it's these two models that have had a long, long history. They've been around for a while, but these two particular ranges that we've got here in the studio with us right now that we're going to introduce you to in, in greater detail uh, are the very latest iterations. Africa Twin is new for 2020 and Goldwing was introduced in 2018, the latest generation. But we'll get into the uh, details of that a little bit later on. All right, so because this is live, we've got, uh, or you've got opportunity to ask us as many questions as you want and we've got four sessions throughout the next hour to, uh, well, I'll ask the questions, Alan, I'll do his best to answer them, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, get your questions in. You can either do it via the live stream to the side of the screen here or there's the email address below. Uh, we've got some fantastic footage coming up of when uh, Alan met up with a colleague of ours, Adam, and took the film crew and some of these bikes up to Yorkshire. So we've got some great stuff coming up for you during the next uh, hour or so. Uh, we've also got an opportunity that if you go off to our dealership, your local dealership, any time in the next couple of weeks, you could earn yourself the Honda Racing BSB Polo shirt. All right, let's get started. We're going to uh, crack on with uh, an introduction to the Goldwing range. So in this first part of the show, we're going to look at uh, a bit of an overview of this range of the Goldwing. It's an iconic part of the Honda history and the current Honda range as well. It's the flagship tour. It's all about comfort and luxury. Some might say it's the epitome of those two things. But uh, first of all, Alan, what, uh, what, well, what, what bikes constitute the range? Well, Michael, you've got two models in the range at the moment, the Goldwing and Goldwing Tour. Um, and both bikes are, are aimed at a specific use, really. Um, the first thing I'm going to say about Goldwing, though, is don't think of it as a Goldwing. I know it's an iconic range, it's a brand in its own right, but don't think of it as a Goldwing. Think of it as a motorcycle. Because once you get on the bike and you ride the bike and you feel how it responds, and we'll talk about some of the technology on the bike that helps it to do that, uh, later on but once you get on the bike you find that it's equally as exciting as anything else on the road it's got more quality more luxury feel you know it, it, it is it is that product that sits at the top of the tree um, I was lucky enough to spend a couple of days on them uh, in Yorkshire uh, last week and even though I'm experienced with the previous model and uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, of big tourers 
it still took me by surprise as being such a great, easy bike to ride, dead easy to ride. You know, we were having to do some really tricky U-turns and, uh, and some quite hilly areas as we were setting up for some of the shots. And, uh, and Chad took us on some really kind of challenging roads as well as some nice long stretches. And I just found the bike to be so versatile. Um, both models as well, and we've got DCT and uh, a manual, so that dual clutch transmission. Uh, and we've got the rider modes and everything we'll talk about as we go through. But the bike is set up this year. It's got a new uh, double wishbone front suspension. Um, you've got electronic adjustable suspension on the Tour. Uh, and there's a couple of other differences across the bikes as well in terms of the application of the tyre pressure monitors. Uh, it's slightly different on the two bikes. And you've got the adjustable suspension on the, on the Tour as well as the airbag option as well. And obviously the luggage uh, trunk uh, or top box, uh, which just adds that extra uh, kind of capacity for the longer tours. But yeah, the main thing for me was just the ease of, of riding these bikes. And they can be, you know, when you look at them, they look quite large. Uh, but like I say, once you get on them, uh, the way the power's delivered, and it's 1833 cylinder uh, CC engine, which gives an awful lot of uh, torque right from the off. So dead easy to ride. Um, not intimidating at all. The center of gravity is really low. So really maneuverable. And don't forget, you've got the reverse gear, or the reverse function, I should say, because it's not actually a gear, on the, on the manual. And on the DCT, you've got reverse and forward crawl modes as well, just to help the maneuverability at really low speed. And you know our car park was a gravel car park, so you can imagine uh, day one, out riding with Honda, tell me to get on a, a gold wing and it's in a gravel car park. It wasn't the, uh, the most confident start for me, but within a couple of minutes of sitting on the bike, it's actually, this is really easy to ride. Isn't it just, yeah, I find that function just so useful, especially when you're trying to maneuver. Perhaps Absolutely. If you're, uh, a little bit short or you, if you're not so confident with moving that weight around, it's so easy. Yeah, absolutely. When you add that to the functionality, and again, we're going to speak, talk about this on, on, on all machines today. Of course, it's been had such an interesting and fascinating history, Goldring. It's been around for many, many years. It's quite an icon uh, within motorcycling. Its appearance has changed over the years. That first generation was 1975, and it was uh, an unfaired GL1000. Um, I think this is the fifth iteration, the fifth generation now, after 45 years, and it's, uh, it's a fascinating history. All right, so that's enough about Goldring for now. We're going to take a little look at the Africa Twin lineup. Here we are among the Africa Twin lineup for 2020, but of course the Africa Twin name itself, the CRF1000L, was rejuvenated in 2016 and became one of the most popular adventure bikes in the market. I believe that in 2019 they were selling around 500 per week globally. And here we are among the CRF1100L, and it's the 2020 version of Africa Twin. Um, Alan, here's the range. Do you want to talk us through what, we've, what we can see here? Yeah, absolutely, Michael. So what Honda have done this year is they've, they've split the range slightly. So we've got Africa Twin, Africa Twin Adventure Sport, and then we've got Africa Twin Adventure Sport with electronic suspension. And all models are available in both manual and dual clutch transmission or DCT, which we'll take a closer look at later on. Uh, and what, what we've got here is an option to be, for the uh, off-road focused uh, motorcyclists. We've got the uh, slim down version, 14 kilos lighter, lower uh, screen, slightly smaller tank. And for those that are more predominantly road uh, orientated, a larger tank, uh, taller screen, uh, and the option for electronics uh, suspension as well. So instead of trying to create that compromise in the middle, they recognize the two types of riders and provided a, an option for both. Electronics on both, so the rider modes and obviously dual clutch transmission, which I've already mentioned, uh, just create an all-round package. It means actually whichever one you choose, you can pretty much do the other job on it as well. So we'll take a closer look at the Africa Twin, the technology and the, the, the DCT later on uh, in the live stream. So one of the primary focuses with the Africa Twin, of course, is adventure and comfort and the ability to do lots of miles. Uh, and we're seeing a bit of a difference between the models. We've already highlighted that. So the big difference between the two visually is the screen, but also in terms of its, I don't know, width, let's say. We've got an 18.8 litre tank versus a 24.8 litre. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the, that's the big difference between the weight. And, and presumably, then, for, it's the, you know, the, light, the lighter version, the smaller tank one, which is going to be more appropriate for, for doing a bit of off-road. Yeah, well, what I found last Week, we took the bikes up to Yorkshire and what I found on the on the Africa Twin is a lot easier to stand up on it's really comfortable when you're hitting those gravel tracks and I'm not an off-road mm. rider so it gave me a lot more confidence 
but actually I do a lot of motorway miles. So for me, it's a slightly bigger tank, the great ergonomics, lots of wind protection. You can sit on a motorway there and get lots of tank range off that without worrying about, you know, having to stop for, for fueling and stuff. So it really is what, whatever, you know, type of riding you do. Um, for me, I would go for the Adventure Sport because of the type of riding I do, but I really did enjoy the Africa Twin off-road, which like I say, I'm not an off-road rider, so it was, it was a little bit scary. We'll, we'll see some of my off-road ability <laughs> later on. Uh, you'll be impressed. So what are the big differences between the outgoing model versus the 2020 model, the 1100, is the sophistication with the electronics particularly. There's a whole load of changes with the, the enhancement of the gearbox, of the engine, of the comfort, of the ergonomics, but particularly around the, um, I mean, one of the, the key points if you're coming into a dealership and you're looking at one of these motorcycles, you can see the dual screen and you can see it's got plenty of extra buttons. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll take a real close look later on at how to get navigate your way around those buttons really easy. It took me about five or six minutes to sit down and just find my way around, and that way I didn't have to look at the, 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 um, the switch gear as I was riding. Um, the uh, way you can set the bike up with the, the rider modes, the suspension, the, the torque control, even the anti-wheelie, which I didn't really need <laughs> for myself personally, um, just make, gives you the confidence to know that you've got the bike set up for the way you are. And, and you know, I look at this from a different point of view to, to most people in this sort of position, Michael, as in I'm a road rider. I do a lot of miles every year. I do it on the motorway. I have to be out on the road in the cold, in the rain, in the snow, and in the baking hot sunshine. Uh, and I just find that these modes and the way the bike's set up just allow me to really tailor the bike to suit me based on my needs at that time. Mm. So, you know, it, it gives me those, those options. Um, there's more power. Uh, the bike's more responsive. Um, they're really refined to the types of customers. And going back to what you said about the amount of bikes that have been sold, one thing that Honda does really, really well is that evolution. They take a bike, they sell loads, they uh, provide uh, or, or get lots and lots of feedback from their customers and then refine the bikes um, as they go along. So I think now we've got an, such a, a pinnacle of the bike. Um, it's going to be a challenge for them to, to, to improve on it, I think, personally. Um, and like I say, having ridden them uh, in Yorkshire last week, and we just had some really hot days, which was great. Um, I, I really enjoyed riding the bike and uh, yeah, it was quite, quite, a good, uh, quite a good little adventure. You didn't necessarily need the heated grips then? No, not at all. No, it's, uh, it, it, was, it, was very, it was about 35, 40 degrees. Uh, but what I did need was to switch between the rider modes. We were on you know, windy roads, we were on small tracks, we were turning around and U-turning on gravel paths. We took a couple of little off-road trips as well, um, which was a bit brave for me. But just being able to switch onto the gravel or the off-road mode. Uh, and one of the things I found, for example, we, we, we turned onto a, a dirt track and uh, I tried to keep up with Chad, who, who I was riding with at the time and I twisted the throttle and it started to spin, but then the traction control kicked in, took the power away, kept me straight, gave me the confidence to know that I'm not gonna you know, uh, have a mishap or whatever. So just put a grin on my face really, because it was there you know, for me, for my level. Uh, and like I say, you can tailor it to suit your level, so really cool. It's good you talk about the versatility of the bike and all of the functions, um, and, it, and it does mean that it's attractive for a whole wide range of, yeah, of, of riders. Yeah. So I think it puts the fun into functionality, uh, and that's one of the, the phrases that I read on, I think, on our, on our own website when we talked about the review of this particular bike. But yeah, versatility and functionality, it, it means that the, the bike or the range you've got you attracting so many different types of people and, and you've already mentioned it about um, your first time off-road or if you've never been off-road then the bike has got you okay well we're going to come back a little bit later on and look at these bikes in a lot more detail but coming right up we've got the answers to some of your questions <laughs> Here we are with our first set of questions. Thank you so much for sending them in so far. Uh, there's three more sections of questions after this bit, so feel free, don't be shy, ask as many questions as you need to. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, how are you feeling? A bit nervous about this? Yeah, section? really nervous actually. It feels like you're like a game show host as soon as you get those cards in your hand. You haven't got any lifelines here, right? Pressure's on. <laughs> Matthew Geary's first up. He says, uh, what is the, f this is exactly his way he asks, right? What is the fuel like for the Africa Twin? Uh, I'm assuming miles per gallon fuel economy. Um, As opposed to taste. 46 miles per gallon uh, listed. Obviously, it depends on how you ride. Um, tank range about 240, 250 miles. Uh, dep again, depending on how you ride and what mode you're in, things like that. But, but, but really good to be very adequate. Uh, you've got an 18 litre tank on the um, Africa Twin and yeah. 24 litre tank sports. on the Adventure Sport. So plenty of fuel for the need. 
Lovely. Kelvin Rivas asks, where can I buy Honda merchandise? Okay, so from your local dealer, really, um, you can go onto the Honda um, website and download the brochures, and you'll see all the merchandise there, but just go and visit your Honda dealer, uh, and they'll have access to a full range of Honda um, merchandise, accessories, everything, really. Oh, don't forget, you can also get your hands on, well, you've got a chance of getting your hands on that <laughs> polo shirt if you go for a test ride in the next two weeks. And Rod Embleton asks, on the Africa Twin, which options are available with the favourites button. Okay, good. Uh, and do they differ between the models? Yeah, no, they do actually. So on the favourite uh, button, you can go in and set it um, to, to switch to whichever your favourite mode is. There's the traction control, the wheelie control, and the rider modes on the Africa Twin and on the um, uh, electronic suspension uh, Adventure Sports, you can add in the G switch as well. Good. Marvellous, thank you very much. You passed. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, we talked about it earlier. We've got some fabulous footage of when the boys went out and tested these bikes up in Yorkshire. Let's go. We're here in the North Yorkshire Moors. We're going to be spending a couple of days riding Africa Twins and Gold Wings. I'm joined by Chad. Now, Chad, you're not Michael, are you? No, sadly. Unfortunately, Michael can't be here, but it's your game because this is my back garden. This is Sledmere. This is right on the edge of the North Yorkshire Moors. So day one, we're going to take the Africa Twins up into the Moors, some challenging roads, a little bit of off-road and some nice fast open sweepers. Day two, we'll take the wings Again, we'll go on some nice Nadgeri roads because the wings are more than capable of doing. And then we'll drop down onto the seafront at Scarborough, turn up the music, and I'll treat you to a fish and chip at the end of the day. I've heard about the fish and chips. And we're going to get a chance to use the DCT both on and off road. Both bikes, we can use DCT on and off road, and we'll have a little bit of traffic, but both bikes have got more than enough power for quick overtakes. It's going to be a good few days. Brilliant. Looking forward to it. Welcome to Yorkshire. Thank you. So Chad, in the day one, we've been out on the Africa Twins. I've had a brilliant day, some real good mix of roads. How have you found them? Yeah, I've really enjoyed it because the mixture of roads, you know, off-road, on-road, winding open, flowing stuff, and some real nadgery stuff over cattle grids where you've got to be a bit cautious and rely on the rider aids that have now got, you know, the lean traction control and the lean uh, ABS. On off-road, it's really interesting to ride the two and find that the semi-active suspension changes when you go on to off-road. So it's a lot easier. And, Yourself, how have you found it? Yeah, brilliant. I've not got as much off-road experience as you, so using the different modes and you know switching into gravel or off-road when we went on those tracks gave me a lot more confidence because I knew when I, when I pushed on the throttle it wasn't going to whip me off. So I was able to keep up a little bit more. So I've really enjoyed it. It gave me a lot more confidence. Tomorrow is Goldwing Day. What have you got in store? We've got, well, it's a beautiful background. I mean, we can go anywhere. So we're going to incorporate some nice nadgery stuff because the wings will take that. And then we've got some nice big open flowing and then we're going to end up on the Scarborough Seafront We'll ride along, get the tunes playing, look good. Brilliant, as long as you don't play Spice Girls again. I've got now 11 ready to go. <laughs> Fantastic, <laughs> looking forward to it. <laughs>
We're at the end of day two, riding around the North Yorkshire Moors on a Goldwing and Goldwing tour. Chad, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's my back garden, and I don't think I've ever ridden Yorkshire in such comfort. So I've been on the standard bike, which is a little bit lighter. Electric screen, no need for a clutch, DCT, just sit back and relax. Cruise control, I've got connectivity, so if I want to put in my tunes, I can do and read text messages. But to be honest, I just like to just sit back, chill out, no gear changes, and just enjoy it. It's quite nice that you can change the rider mode that changes the suspension and changes when it changes gear. And I love to see how the front forks move underneath the clock. Yeah, like it's that. a bit addictive when you're riding yeah. a really bumpy road and, and they're moving like crazy, but you're in perfect you comfort. You can see how quickly it's working, but actually you're just gliding yeah, along. Yeah, yeah, it's like a swan swimming. Yeah. Feet underneath going crazy and gliding on the top. And the power, how'd you find the power? I found coming up some of those heels and that, it's just so easy just to blip up and, and get past them. It's so easy to blip up, and if you want to do an overtake or you're going up a steep hill, you can flick to sport, and then it'll automatically change down gears for you. Yeah. So it's dead easy. I mean. It's got so much torque, it'll uproot trees. It's dead easy. Yeah, and then when you want to wind down and just cruise along, again, it's so smooth, comfortable. Yeah, 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 comfortable. And in this heat, it's been nice to drop the screen, you get the breeze, and then when you get going a bit quicker, up with the electric screen, get a bit protective, well, I've had visor up. that extra air vent on here, which has been really useful, actually, going through today. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how have you enjoyed Yorkshire? Yeah, brilliant. Beautiful roads, amazing, amazing scenery, amazing roads, you know. Um, I think it's great just to, uh, have that mix from like the hilly bits up and down and yeah. then we've had a couple of good straight bits where you can really kind of open up a little bit and enjoy the bike a little bit more yeah uh, the weather's been great as well the benefit here is you can go from the coastline here at scarborough you can go to fast stuff nagery stuff beautiful deals whether you're out in the middle of nowhere you've got a real combination in a short area as well you'd have to do a huge amount of miles to experience four or five different roads. Yeah, brilliant. So I've had a really enjoyable day, you? Yeah, just time for a fish and chip, seafront, job done. Perfect, brilliant. Well, that looks a lot of fun. How on earth did I miss out on that? I was absolutely gutted. It looked like you had a fabulous time. Amazing time, Michael, really amazing. Uh, and on a number of levels, really, uh, I mean, Chad obviously knows the area really well, so he, he could really pick the roads for us. And he didn't give us the easy option. He, took, he, he picked roads that would test the bikes and us uh, to the limit, really. Uh, and it was fun. And for me, the, the surprise was how great this bike was uh, on a mixture of roads. You know, we were having to U-turn on tiny roads, up and down small hills, and then onto long, long sections. And uh, we really got to, uh, to fully understand the benefits of a bike like this. Um, simple functions like the, the, one of mine, the favourites again, is, is a windscreen. Uh, is you know, it's just such <laughs> an easy function to use, and yet you know, when you're on a longer road, it gets a bit buffety. You can put the screen up, and again, you can put it down when you when you're trying to uh, track through. There's a, an additional ventilation in there as well. Um, it's an absolute doddle. Is that the left, the left hand bar? Isn't just it? yeah, just just very simple uh, button right next to your volume. Loads of functionality on on the screen. Sat nav integrated. Apple CarPlay. And uh, on the tour model, you've got your, your suspension settings Can't as well. Can't get those two buttons mixed up when you've got Justin Bieber blaring. No, uh, we had Spice Girls actually, which is <laughs> quite funny. Uh, that shouldn't have been on my playlist. But um, yeah, just a really great day. Um, and, and a couple of things about the bike I really love. So you've got the double wishbone suspension at the front mm. end. And there's two things about this that really smack, uh, smack you in the face really, is you can get to see the suspension working and you really see how hard it's working while at the same time, the bike is as smooth as anything. It's just such a, a pleasure to ride. Nice, big, wide, comfy seat, um, but it doesn't put you off the ground too much. You can get your feet down nice and easy. Um, the uh, drivability of the engine is just, the power's there when you want it, but it's not frightening. It comes on really smooth. There's four modes on this bike. So mm -hmm. you've got sport, tour, uh, e economy mode, and, uh, and rain mode. And you can really tell the difference when you go into sport, the bike really picks itself up. So if you're a fast rider, you know, like a bit of power on tap, then that's all you're ever gonna need. Uh, for me, I like to settle down on the main roads, click it into tour, and I'd probably even go into eco mode if I was doing longer journeys as well, although the, the bike does have a great tank range anyway. There's a little cubby hole here, which allows you to put your iPod in uh, and connect to Apple CarPlay. First thing I did, hence the, the spy skills, um, and on the tour model, you've got heated seats as well, which, which is uh, a comfort for Front and back. Front so and back. Pillion, yeah. Pillion gets a heated seat too. Switch gear is really good. You know, when you're stationary, you've got the switch gear straight in front of you and you've got your heated seat and heated uh, handlebar controls on there. Uh, you've got a central dial, which allows you to navigate through the menus as well as enter. Mm -hmm. And then you've got hand switch gear, um, 
which is just well spaced, easy to use. And again, you'll often hear me say this, before I ever go off and ride a motorcycle, I, I, I make my way around the controls to make sure I don't have to look at them whilst I'm riding. And again, you find the navigation is really easy once you get the enter button, return button, home button, you know where you're going from there. You can really start to use it easily. Uh, full tire pressure monitor system on the tour. You've got tire pressure monitoring warning on the, on the, uh, on the gold wing. Uh, but yeah, just really comfortable but powerful as well and, and, and easy to ride, really sporty, uh, but really kind of, you know, gives you that uh, quality feel. Um, so the big difference between the, the previous generation and this generation was, was predominantly the, uh, the, lock, la the lack of weight, so the loss of weight, plus that wishbone suspension, double wishbone suspension, and, and the sophistication with the, um, specifically the, the, the TFT display, the yeah. Apple CarPlay, the the way in which the, 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 the whole cockpit is laid out, it's, it just, it's taken that level of sophistication up a notch, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely, uh, you know, and, and it works. It's, it's such an easy bike uh, to ride. The, um, I, you know, I've ridden previous models and I've thoroughly enjoyed those models. And I got onto this with an expectation like everybody does. Um, and within a few minutes, you'll find that actually, yeah, this, this is a, a really good bike to, ro uh, a good bike to ride. Uh, it's got all the comfort you're ever going to need. It's got a fantastic ergonomical uh, seat in position. You've got plenty of wind protection. You've got great visibility. The dash is easy to navigate. It's not too overcomplicated like some machines can be. It's dead easy to, to navigate through. Nice clear signage as Honda always does. Uh, things like hill start assist. So again, when you come to a set of traffic lights and you're on a slight incline, you can just squeeze the brake a little bit and it will put on the hill start uh, assist for you and allow you just to control the machine before you move off as well. Um, so yeah, just functional. We, we, we talk about this a lot. Really functional, really comfortable. It does exactly what it says on the tin. And I tell you what, I came off this bike absolutely grinning. So you did miss out, absolutely. I remember riding it in the Isle of Man a couple of years ago when the, the, the 2018, this generation was just out. And I wasn't, I deliberately wanted to get on it and just ride. I didn't want to worry about um, options and modes and things like that. It was a case of get on it, and just go, and it and it worked perfectly. It was yeah. just absolutely ideal. And, you know, it got to ride from from north to south. Okay, on the Isle of Man, it's not that far. But the the point is that it doesn't have to be big, long highways and and, and, and motorways where this is at home. Because I'm sure, as you found last yeah, absolutely. week, absolutely. And, and you know, we, we we said this throughout a Yorkshire trip. The the Goldwing, big miles. The Tour, bigger miles. You know, and it's simple as that. And when you're on a bike for you know three, four, five, six, seven hours. You need something that's going to be comfortable, that's going to you know, allow you to maintain your attention on the road and, and be safe, yet still enjoy the machine and, and enjoy motorcycling. Is it, uh, I think it was Steve McQueen said something like, you know, driving a car allows you to, it's like being in a movie. Uh, sorry, it's like watching a movie, but riding a motorcycle is like being in the movie. Uh, and this really gives you that, that kind of that view of the road. And, uh, and like I say, we had some fantastic roads to cover last week, some beautiful scenery. Uh, and I wasn't afraid to take my eyes off the road for a couple of seconds and enjoy the environment, enjoy the, the places we were in. Uh, beautiful hot days as well, which made it great. But, um, but yeah, just really enjoyed the whole, the whole riding experience, which, which is absolutely key, I guess. All right, fantastic. I, uh, I really do regret not being in Yorkshire after all that. Uh, okay, your turn next. You ask the questions and we'll do our best to answer them. And we're back with the next set of questions. Again, thanks so much for all your questions coming in. In fact, it's been more than just questions. We've had Ahmed from uh, Turkey sending us his greetings. So thank you for those and greetings back to you from Corby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Steve Huggett as well. I just want to address your, your question. Uh, thank you for sending it in. This forum's all about Goldwing and Africa Twins, so we're not able to um, talk about rumors of future models as well. And uh, Alan, you've still got all your lifelines remaining. Okay, uh, cool. <laughs> this is from Vanator, who asks, is the Af Africa Twin practical for everyday commuting? Well, yeah, a simple answer is yes, Michael. And, you know, everything I want to do is about making a motorcycle that, although it's aimed at a specific type of rider, can generally do most jobs on the road. And you'll find that across the whole range. The ergonomics, the seating position, the wide bars, the control, uh, the way the bike's set up, plus all the electronic aids on the mm -hmm. bike, means it's pretty much ideal for anything. 
You know, personally, I switched to a, a, an Avenger style bike many, many years ago on a, on a Veradero, and I found it really comfortable on the motorways. I do long commutes, hence the 30,000 miles, but equally I jump on it to go to the shops and things like that. So you'll find that really easy to jump on for the five minute journey or the half an hour, hour or, or longer if you need. And that's obviously where you start to consider about moving up to the Avenger Sport. Yeah if you've got those longer commutes really so yeah perfect for it yeah, it's worth thinking about seat height as well and the fact that the uh, there were so many options there but also the way in which the center of gravity is quite low with the engine sitting low in the front yeah it, it's really well balanced it's got lots of uh, stability controls and uh, and it's just ergonomically designed to, to be comfortable and easy to use and one of the big things about commuting is uh, from personal experience is is that fatigue when you get to the end of a journey if i've got a three or four hour journey um, and I've got to work at the end of it, I want to get there refreshed and relaxed. So the seating position is really, really good for that. So yeah, you can absolutely commute on it. Uh, Legend of Sponge says, what advantage do spoked wheels have over alloy wheels? Loving the usernames. Uh, you'll find most off-road bikes will have spoked wheels. They offer a little bit more flexibility uh, for off-road conditions, for soaking up the bumps. So they, they almost act as a as a, a first kind of um, impact absorption, really. They give you good flexibility off-road um, and, and like I say, that flexibility. A cast wheel is often better for the road because it offers a bit more rigidity, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also helped to reduce some of the unsprung weight so you can get the road, the, the tires on the road a little bit quicker as well. Good stuff. Well, while we're on Africa Twin, uh, coming up in the next session, there's a lot more detail about that range. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, earlier on, we looked at the overview of the Africa Twin Range. Alan, we're going to take a, a little deep dive, uh, for want of a better expression, into the technology, the sophistication, the, the bits that stand out on all these models. I guess the first thing to talk about is that fantastic touchscreen uh, display there. Yeah, absolutely. It gives you all the information you need uh, at a glance. Uh, you've also got the, the dual screen, so you can, you've got all your rider information on the bottom anyway. So if you do want to ignore it, you can, but you've got a selection of displays. You can switch between your rider modes. And, and if, it's really easy to manipulate as well. One of the things I found when I first got on the bike was just to spend a few minutes getting to know the switch gear. Mm. And there is a real good logic to the, to the navigation between it. And I'll just show you as, uh, from my point of view, yeah. the first thing I found is the two key buttons for me were the enter and the, the back button. And I can just place my thumb there and I've got the joint of my thumb to hit the enter and then the back on the, on the pad of my thumb. And from there, I could work the other navigation buttons through. I've got my function button uh, at the top here and my display button as well. So within about four or five minutes before I even set off, I knew I could navigate through the screens pretty easily mm. without having to look uh, at, at the switch gear, which always gives you more confidence when, you, when you're riding, particularly if you're off road. And on the right hand bar, you've got cruise control. So it's really easy just to press the button and set the speed you want to go to. Uh, and the cruise control will maintain the bike at the speed you're, you're riding at. Uh, if you do dab on the brake or the clutch, it'll come off and then you can just resume by pressing that button again. So I find that a great feature, particularly on the motorway. And especially, Michael, if you're in one of those speed restricted zones, you know, 50 mile an hour, we all love them, don't we? But you can set it to 50 miles an hour and know that you're not going to get caught. It's pretty convenient, isn't it, as well? It's just on where your thumb would be. It's quite natural. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And you'll find that with all the switch gear. Like I say, it's almost a case of take a few minutes before you ride it, get familiar with the, with the buttons, and you won't have to look at it when you're riding because mm. you'll find that you've always got your enter button, you've always got the return button, you've got the navigation, which are relatively easy to find, uh, and the screen just gives you information in such a clear and precise manner. It just enables you to select the right modes. Um, as you go up through the models as well, and you, you set up your modes, and particularly when we look at the electronic suspension model, that's always a good idea to sit down and do that beforehand. And you can always change it yeah. uh, when you stop, but, but it just gives you all that information to hand and makes it really easy to change the, 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 the function of the bike as, as you're riding. I'm pretty intrigued by it. As soon as I get on a new bike, and you know, in my role, I get to ride so many different makes and models, um, some that are very, very basic in terms of their instrumentation and, and operation. But, uh, but something like this, actually, it's really intriguing because in this sort of technology, technologically focused era, we've, we've got, specifically on this model, we've got so much touchscreen, you know, of course it's touchscreen when you're, when you're standing still, but, but it can't be on, on the move, but you've got so many buttons there and it's all about familiarization, isn't it? Absolutely. There's, there's not Absolutely. every single rider, we're not covering 
uh, what everybody would like to do with those buttons. Perhaps some would uh, get a bit daunted by it, but I think that actually with a little bit of time, like you said, five or six minutes even. Yeah, absolutely. I always set five or six minutes before I ride just to make sure I'm comfortable. And if you think about it, look at, look at how we operate our mobile phones with one hand. You know, I can have a conversation with my son. He doesn't even look at his phone and he'll, he'll talk to me whilst he's still typing. And I'm not saying you get to that level, but certainly knowing where the, where the navigation buttons are sure. will get you around the bike easily. On the Adventure Twin, you've got um, uh, adjustable seat height and you've got a lower seat option as well. And like we said before, you've got a narrow tank, so you've got a nice ideal standing up position. You'll also notice there's a slightly smaller peak on the screen as well, which cool. just aids you when you are standing up. So seat height, there's two available as standard. And then if you want a lower seat height or a taller seat height, you can buy those at point yeah, of sale, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So that gives you the option, again, for people who just prefer to have their feet a little bit more planted on mm -hmm. the ground, like me, um, you, can, you can go for those options. Uh, so again, you've got such uh, a flexibility in the bike, uh, and Honda's really great at doing that, making a bike that, that will fit a large number of people, you know, in whatever riding style they have, really. Mm -hmm. And some of the other features, this, this new model, this 2020 model, it's, it's been revised, there's less rigidity in the frame, and also the, the subframe is now detachable as well, which I think helps if you are going to be uh, doing your green lanes or going off-road a bit. Yeah, and it's always a big demand from, from the, the true green laners uh, and off-roaders. They always want a detachable subframe for obvious reasons. Uh, so that's been made available now, which, which will please a lot of people, I'm absolutely sure. And on this um, model, you've got uh, standard spokes, which of course give you the option of having tubed tires, which again, a bit more convenience. 21 inch front, 18 rear, same as the rest of the range as absolutely. well. Absolutely, absolutely. And it comes with Apple CarPlay uh, as per the rest of the, the models. Mm -hmm which just it adds that extra level of connectivity. You know, I'm a great one for plugging in my, my iPod and listening to my tunes, um, set up your headset, it's dead easy to connect. It's a couple of, couple of minutes again, just to uh, set up your Bluetooth on your headset. You can, you know, manage your, your phone and, and your, your music and stuff. And uh, some of my music is quite inappropriate, but I do like to have it, have it playing whilst I'm riding. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's the all-round package, really. I know we said this is an off-road focused machine, but it's equally as happy on the road. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, you know, if, if that's the model you prefer for looks or just you prefer the small screen, then absolutely. Uh, this one really is about uh, getting most out of the machine, most feel as well. Uh, when we look at the Adventure Sport, we'll look at, you know, how the ergonomics change slightly to give you a more comfort uh, on-road feel. Shall we? Seems like the perfect yeah, opportunity absolutely. to move, move around Let's and look, look at the Adventure Sports. Now this is the particular model with the electronic suspension as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So again, you know, I'd urge anybody buying one or even just test riding one because, you know, please do go and test ride them. Take the time beforehand to sit through the, the infinite amount of suspension adjustments you can make. Again, very easy through the touch, uh, touch screen uh, and the navigation buttons to set it up mm -hmm. you know, for preload, for dampening, for uh, uh, damping, I should say, for one rider, two riders, luggage, so on and so forth. So then you can pre-select before you ride each journey uh, and make sure the bike's set up right for you. A lot larger fuel tank, 24.8 <laughs> litres, which should give you, I believe, somewhere around about 250, 280 miles, depending yeah. on how you ride. Obviously, it's, uh, it, it, it comes down to how you ride the bike, ultimately. Um, but that's plenty for those you know, long motorway journeys. I know I always uh, like to stop every 100 miles or so and, and stretch my legs, certainly. It's a great combination, isn't it? It's got the economy and it's got the comfort as well. Certainly, I've ridden this particular model um, a, a fair amount. I've done several hundred miles and already, you know, you can feel the differences between the, this, this particular model with its uh, redesigned seat uh, and the riding position. It is very, very comfortable. Yeah, and actually, you, you, to those 270 odd miles, We'll, we'll breeze by. Absolutely, and you've got heated grips on this model, which are easily uh, accessible via the function button on the right-hand side, um, and then you can adjust it on the left as well, uh, as well as the same interaction navigation on the Africa Twin. Like I say, you've also got the uh, additional settings uh, for the suspension, as well as across all models, the, the user modes, where you have um, two uh, individual user modes where you can set them up specifically in terms of engine power, uh, engine braking, uh, traction control, even anti-wheeling, which well, clearly I don't need, but <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So so it is ultimately you know, apply, you know you can you can individualize it to your own specific needs. So one great feature I love, Michael, being a predominantly road rider, is the adjustable screen, which is dead easy to adjust. Um, you know, gone are the days where you had to get the the Allen key set out. Um, it's dead easy to adjust for the different roads. And, and again, you know, I find if it's a nice sunny day, or if I'm if I'm you know working through traffic, I like to put the screen nice and low, but equally if it's cold or, you know, just one of those buffety days, you can put the screen up and you'll get adequate coverage um, 
without it obscuring your vision. So I just find it great to be able to adjust that uh, for any kind of occasion that I'm riding. Equally, the bikes are probably a little squatted down. Uh, if you've got a pillion, if you've got luggage, if it's weighing a bit more, you can not only adjust the screen for, for, for your benefit, your pillion's benefit, but also the um, suspension settings are, are incredibly uh, complex. Um, so much as that you've got all those preload settings. You've almost got the automatic settings on which there are four, I think, yeah, rider, yeah. rider plus luggage, rider plus pillion, and, and then luggage on top of that as well. But then there are so many different settings, you can find that perfect balance to where you and your pillion are the most comfortable. Absolutely. And I was just going to mention as well, that with the, particularly with the DCT, and the same goes for the Goldwing model as well, you get that, that extra level of comfort where you're not having that, that almost that, that helmet clashing, so yes. that smoothness of the gearbox, the smoothness of the engine, the way in which the throttle connection works, and you've got you know, a really comfortable, a comfortable touring bike. Yeah, obviously. absolutely. And, and you know, as you say, the suspension settings, uh, there's an infinite combination, so you can really fine tune it to, you know, the, the, the weight that you're carrying, the luggage, the way that you ride, uh, and then map it to, to your, your rider modes as well. So uh, again, all I would urge people to do is take a little bit of time to set it up correctly. Uh, for me, I like the Honda settings because I think they get it right for me personally. Um, but I do like to have a play around with the individual settings. And you can do that on this bike without upsetting the other settings. So. So you can set them up for yourself. Yeah, again, when I was riding, I, I quite liked having the, the setting where you've got rider plus luggage, yeah. even though I didn't have any luggage. It just felt a little bit firmer at the rear for me for the way I want to ride yeah, the bike. Absolutely. In the same way that it was fantastic. It was almost unnoticeable, and that's a good thing, yeah. about that front suspension where the, the electronics work so quickly. And it's thanks to that, uh, you know, that, that, I, that IMU in there. You're, you're over a potted road or, or an, you know, a a nasty road, let's call it, and, and all of a sudden you're, you're almost gliding just in the way in which the, the suspension offers you that comfort. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, you know, when you look at the adventure style of the bike, that's a refinement that you probably don't expect. So, you know, I would urge anybody who's looking at Africa Twin, have a look at the, the uh, adventure sport with electronic suspension because it really does add that extra element. And if you are doing a lot of miles, it gives you that flexibility to change depending on the time of year, the style of riding, the type of journey you're doing. For example, you know, I do a lot of uh, motorway miles, but I also live relatively close to Lake District, so often we tend to like to go out and, and find some twisty roads. So I like to be able to adapt the bike to that as well. And I found that when we was in Yorkshire last week, it was um, we had quite a mix of roads. You know, uh, we um, we were obviously riding around Chad's back garden, and he he knew where to go in terms of the twisty roads, the gravelly bits, and there was a couple of uh, a few fast straights as well. So you can quite easily adapt the bike to suit. Well, we've talked about functionality, we've talked about versatility and, uh, and the range on offer here is, it really does cover all those bases. And of course, with all those, the versatility and the functionality with all this, the, the range, and including, of course, all those, all those modes, be it off-road, be it gravel, um, there's a fantastic place to try it all and it's, and it's here and it's pictured behind us. It's the, the Dave Thorpe Honda uh, Off-Road Adventure Centre. Uh, let's go and find out a little bit more about that. We're back with another set of questions. Again, thank you for sending them in and keep, keep doing so because we've got another round or another opportunity coming up soon. Uh, actually, Alan, before we get stuck into this set of questions, uh, there's a couple of people, including David, who's been asking about the finance options or packages for the bikes. Cool, oh, listen, Honda Finance Services, they've got a whole range of, of offers. If you look on the website, you'll see your current offers. Uh, and do speak to your dealer network because they can be tailor-made in terms of you know deposit term, what you're gonna use the bike, the mileage you do, there's lots and lots of options. So do have a conversation with your dealer. But, but again, look on the website for the, for the headline, uh, headline offers. But uh, they're there to really help people get onto the motorcycles they wanna get onto, really. Good stuff. Uh, Michael Coates is next up. He asks, uh, what is the future for DCT? 
future for DCT? Uh, don't know, but I'll tell you what the past is. Mr. Um, Meg. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Meg. Um, there's a we launched DCT in 2010, and it was a fantastic, fantastic product uh, as soon as it hit the market. Um, within the first 12 months, Honda had already refined it. It was 40% uh, efficiency more in dynamic uh, fluid dynamics. It was uh, upgraded in terms of software. The rider modes, uh, the mapping, I should say, was, was improved to suit the more European style of riding, and it's continued to do that all the way through. Um, Honda have sold over 8,000 bikes in the UK since 2010, and 140,000 across Europe with DCT, so I can only see it becoming more and more, yeah. more uh, refined and more important to motorcycling. It does take a, a bit of a, a different paradigm d d mindset when you first jump on a DCT and start to ride it, well, in a few minutes, you, it, it makes sense. It really does. There's another DCT question from uh, Narinda who asks, how do you control a DCT during a slow U-turn? Good question. Um, it goes back to basics, really. I remember when I did my initial motorcycle training, uh, I was taught to uh, control my road speed, uh, sort of control my engine speed with the throttle, my road speed with the rear brake. So I do the same thing with DCT. I pick the line I'm going to go. I'm going to take round. Uh, I get my engine speed right, and then I control the road speed with my back brake. And I just I go three or four yards, and then when I'm comfortable, I turn in and do my, my U-turn. I tell you, I must have done 50 or 60 U-turns on on all of these bikes uh, up on the on the moors uh, with Chad, and it, it really challenging to be fair. Uh, some up and downs, hills, small small turns, gravel pits, and things like that. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, got really good use good use out of that technique. Um, but uh, you know, we would say yourself, Michael, because that's quite a broad question, isn't it? Really, everyone does it quite different. Sounds like you've you've nailed it already. You've got that. You're the U-turn king. <laughs> we, we had an intense couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> There's no scratches on any of these bikes no, either. No, so obviously no, you were no. successful. Polished them out. Which um, which is quite an accomplishment, accomplishment, isn't it? When you you, you mass that U-turn, it is a, yeah. a bit of a victory, a moral victory. What I would do, I think, with DCT specifically, I would have it in um, manual mode, and I'd just click first, yeah, first brilliant. gear, brilliant. click it at first, and then I am going to worry about uh, um, gears Change or clutch. Up, yeah. I can concentrate on what I'm doing. I can look ahead, and I can make that that movement, that sweep, nice and gently. Yeah, perfect, good idea. Mm. And just practice. And like I say to everyone, you know, you, you often hear me say, you know, get on it, try it. You know, set some time aside to get it right in your head. But once you've done it a few times, it becomes dead easy Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, while we're talking about DCT, uh, coming up in the next session, uh, we're going to go and talk a little bit further about the about what it means, and uh, we're going to see it in action as well. Well, and here we are on the rolling road, Honda's rolling road. They've uh, been used this at shows uh, throughout the country. Uh, giving people the opportunity to, to experience what these uh, DCT gearbox is like. But I know it's been around for 10 years and I know that uh, almost half of Africa Twins sold in 2019 had the DCT box and two thirds of Goldwings as well, which is an incredible stat. And it just shows how you know, the technology has moved on and got better and better. But what does it mean? And give us the basics of, of how that function works. Sure, first off, Michael, I'll tell you what it isn't. It isn't an automatic. Uh, let's just dispel that myth straight away. Uh, it's a uh, electronically actuated manual gearbox. It has a manual gearbox, has two clutch packs, has a very clever system of engaging the next gear, uh, depending on the information you're, you're, you're giving the bike, and it will cut out that transition from one gear to the other. So you get a nice seamless transition from one gear to the other, a nice smooth ride. Um, it's evolved over the years. Um, we introduced it in 2010. And even in the first 12 months, uh, the first kind of evolution reduced the, uh, the fluid dynamics by 40% uh, and changed the mapping to suit the, the more European uh, style of riding. So it's been on this constant path of evolution. Uh, it's a great piece of kit um, uh, to have on any bike. And it just takes away that um, thought process of having to think about clutch, gears, uh, slip in the clutch, all that kind of stuff. Mm. You know, if you've got a long ride or you're covering lots of miles, which is what this bike's designed to do, actually you can just pop it into to, uh, an automatic mode, not automatic, but an automatic mode, and just enjoy the road. Alternatively, you can switch it into manual and you've got two paddles down here, or triggers, I should say, the more like triggers, and you can slip between each gear. And again, without having to think about the clutch, you'll get this seamless transition. It auto blips on the way down, so it's a nice, 
nice feeling to it as well. And it will change gears faster than you ever will. So if you're a sporty rider, test ride it, put it into sport mode uh, and see what you think. But you'll find it really, really impressive. All right, well, let's see it in action. This is actually a section that we recorded slightly earlier because this particular uh, piece of kit is very, very noisy. All right, here it is. Right, Michael, so what you have seen there on that short clip is I started the bike, I put it into automatic mode, drive, and I just pushed on the, or twisted the twist grip, took it up through the revs, and the bike automatically goes through each gear. Uh, really, really seamless. Um, don't forget, we are sitting on a rolling road, so the suspension is tied down. Uh, and then I brought it all the way down to zero, popped it into the, uh, into the manual mode, and then I just worked my way through the, the trigger buttons to take it up through the gears and back down again. Now, let me just tell you a bit more about what happens whilst I'm doing that. In essence, because of the information systems on the bike, the sensors, the, the six axis IMU, the ECU, the bike's reading all the time my, my demands, what, it want, what I'm asking it to do uh, through the throttle by wire, and then it's pre-selecting the next relevant gear, whether that's up or down, it's pre-selecting the next gear. So if I'm in third gear and I'm asking for more power, it's gonna pre-select fourth gear. It has twin clutch packs, so at any one time, one gear is engaged. But what it means is as it disengages the third gear and then engages the fourth gear, there is a seamless transition of power. And it continually does that far quicker than I can pull on a lever. So whether I'm going up the gearbox, down the gearbox, or even chopping and changing in between. And if I'm not happy with the way it's changing, I, like I said, I can switch to automatic mode, uh, sorry, to manual mode uh, and do it myself. So um, it's such an efficient system. Like I said, in the previous piece, you know, in the first year, they improved it. They've now gone through this whole kind of 10 years of development with the ECT or dual clutch transmission. And not only is there the mechanical side where they refined the way that it, it you know, uses the fluid and, and the size of the clutch packs, but also the software that runs it as well. So they've changed the mapping. So that includes the fueling, where the revs cut in, where they cut out, where it changes, uh, changes up and down and so on and so forth. So it's far more refined than it ever was. And I believe you rode one a few years ago. I had, the, I had a long-term bike from Honda the, when the, um, the reincarnation of the Africa Twin came out in 2016. And I certainly remember, and I've ridden this version as well, and I can tell immediately how, how that a system has progressed and it's so much smoother than it used to be. And, you know, the technology behind it, it's, it's so much more, it predicts what you're going to do. There's, there's, there's a lot less of you know, changing gear in the corner and it's, it's just a better system, isn't it, now? And now, yeah. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great evolution. Good, well the technology has come on leaps and bounds in the last 10 years, Who's, who knows what's going to happen in the next 10 years. Um, all right, good stuff. All right, well coming up soon, or coming up next in fact, is the final question and answer session. So be quick, get your questions in and we'll do our best to answer them. One of the significant changes Honda has made over the last 12 months is to develop a network of Goldwing specialist dealers. Each dealer will have a dedicated and trained Goldwing specialist who can explain all of the functionality and features of each bike. They'll have dedicated uh, demonstrators, both manual and DCT, a wide range of Goldwing parts and accessories, as well as a Goldwing trained technician. Courtesy bikes are also available for Goldwing customers. Now you can still order your Goldwing through your local dealer, but for that extra Goldwing experience, please do contact your nearest Goldwing specialist dealer. Well, this is our final set of questions, so thank you so much for sending them all in uh, so far. Uh, actually, I think I might take this one if that's okay with you. Uh, seeing that you're doing I think so it's an easy well. one, is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, we've had a few questions in about top box space on the Goldwing Tour, um, including from Abby, uh, asking about uh, being as a pillion. Is it possible to fit two full face helmets in the top box? Well, during rehearsals earlier this week, we took the opportunity to um, film a little piece uh, to really put that to bed because yes you can we had two well in fact they're still in there now and on the bike just over my shoulder there's two full face array helmets in there uh, and you get it closed nice and easily and there's still a bit of space in there for your sandwiches and your toothbrush 
Uh, so that's all good. Um, moving on, uh, we've had both Robert and Charles. Uh, Charles is actually from the Goldwing Owners Club, which is, which is great to have them on board. Um, they've both asked about SatNav on the Goldwing, uh, okay. specifically about address input formats and Brilliant. about downloading routes to the navigation system. Okay, perfect. Um, good question as well, because obviously satellite navigation is really important, particularly if you're, you're riding a bike like Goldwing or Goldwing Tour. It's a Garmin system, it's a full postcode entry, or you can do street address and town. Uh, you can download your maps via, um, there's a trip planner website from Honda, or a lot of guys use Basecamp. And again, you can download to USB, plug it into the bike, there's a selection to import. You can also track and log your, your route. So if you're free routing, you can set the track, it will track your route, and then you can download that and share that with other, other riders if you, if you found a particularly you know, beautiful spot or whatever. Um, so yeah, and another important thing about the SatNav is that um, uh, updates are uh, available uh, at your dealer network free of charge and uh, they'll notify you. They'll try and tie it in to when you're doing your service, but mm -hmm. you can go and visit them uh, as and when updates are available. It uh, has to be done by a dealer because it's quite a, a, a process, uh, and they'll be available for a minimum of 15 years, so you can have complete confidence that, 15 years. yeah. Uh, and you know, you can have confidence to know that you're always gonna have up-to-date maps on the, on the sat-nav, so right. good question, really. Yeah, really good, and, and again, thank you for every, every one of your questions so far. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the time allocated for this show. So I uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure uh, for us to have you with us. Um, just encourage you that uh, any time over the next two weeks, get down to your local dealership, have a test ride on any one of these bikes. And of course you could win, ah, here it is. Ta -da -da. The Honda Racing BSB polo shirt. Actually, speaking of um, Honda racing, I've got to wish the, the Honda team, the Irwin brothers on the new Fireblade, the best of luck here at Snetterton this weekend and the British, in the Bennett's British <laughs> Superbike Championship. <laughs> God, will I get an email. Um, <laughs> this weekend at Snetterton, free practice starts tomorrow. And, uh, and yeah, any other information, there's a lot more in the de description below. There's lots of links to everything we've talked about today. You've got um, the Honda Engine Room website, you've got Bike Social website for all of your motorcycling features and views and reviews and news and so on. Uh, but yes, thank you so much for being with us. Alan, do, do you want to wrap up? Yeah, just really, you know, this is our last one of, of four live streams. It's been a fantastic experience. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. We've had lots and lots of questions. It's been great to get to know the bikes. Uh, personally, I want to thank the guys behind the camera yeah. who have uh, made this possible work tirelessly to, to make sure this uh, stream has, has come together as well as it has. Uh, and yeah, no, it's been a great experience. And like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. As, as usual, Honda leading the field, you know, putting together something in these strange times, cliche of the year so far. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think they've done an amazing job, outstanding job. It's been great to be part of it. And uh, like I said, hopefully you've enjoyed it. And, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll do some more in the future. Yeah, it's been a real Yourself? pleasure. Yeah, I think we've, um, we've had a really, really good time with these. It's been interesting to learn about the bikes and to give you as much information as we can hopefully have given you and to maybe change some perceptions along the way as well. Uh, it's been our pleasure. So thanks again for joining us. Cheers. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.